What's up, Blender Savages? All right, so we're gonna make a low poly muscular arm perform a bicep flex. We're gonna anim animate the bad boy gains. All right, so here we have a cube. We're gonna get rid of the cube. And we're gonna bring in an icosphere, and that icosphere will be the shoulder for our arm right here. Gains. All right, X key or delete key. Select the cube there, X key, delete key. Boom, delete. I'm gonna bring in the icosphere, so shift A. Mesh, icosphere. So icosphere, not UV sphere, that's a round one. We want this blocky one, right there, icosphere. We want it to be uh, low poly. So I'm gonna three on the number pad for right view. There we go. And then the decimal key on the number pad to zoom in center. Make sure to have number lock on on the, uh, on your, uh, on your number pad on at all times. All right, so I'm gonna take this to edit mode, tab key for edit mode. There we go. And right here, you can also change the edit mode by clicking up here and switching over to edit mode. There we go. You can't go to object mode, sorry, to edit mode, because your sphere, your mesh object is not selected. So just left click it to select it and go over here to edit mode. All right, I'm going to get rid of this little vertex right there. So I'm going to left click it one time. I'm going to hit the X or delete key, X, and you get a pop up menu here. I'm going to go with vertex, delete just vertices there. Boom. I want to select this whole bottom part right here because I'm going to start extruding out an arm from there, from the uh, from the Zyclosphere here. I want to switch over to wireframe because if I uh, select this right here in solid view, I'm only going to get here what's in my view. I won't get all of them. Oh, look, I did get all of them. Three for right view. Uh, well, just in case, best practice, shift over to wireframe, shift Z, and then drag across the bottom there. You should get all of those there. Three on the number pad for right view. Hold on the left mouse button and drag across the bottom. You get an invisible or the dotted box here. And whatever inside that dotted box gets selected. So only select the bottom part here, those vertices there. All right, I'm going to zoom out. I spin the wheel on the mouse. You can also hit the minus key on the number pad to zoom out. I'm going to extrude an arm from here. All right, so I'm gonna, how much am I going to extrude by? Minus 0.2 blender unit. So I'm going to hit E to activate the extrusion tool. And then Z to snap the extrusion in the Z axis. So I can only extrude along the Z axis, which is up and down here. And minus 0.2. So I go down in the minus direction by 0.2 blender units and enter to commit to that change. Here we go. E, Z, minus 0.2, enter. There we go. Just extruded that piece of mesh there. That extra mesh, see? All right. And now I'm going to flare that out. I'm going to scale it out 20% wider. So I'm going to hit S. For scale then 1.2 to tell it to go up by uh, 1.2 and then enter to commit to that s 1.2 enter there we go and i still got the same stuff selected here i haven't left clicked anywhere else because if i do it's going to deselect it so you want to keep that selected there so don't start left clicking all over the place all right now i'm going to extrude down some more uh, minus one blender unit on the z axis so that's e z minus one enter there we go and a blender unit, it's one of these grid marks here. So here's a bigger grid mark there. Let me zoom out so you can see them. There you go. And these smaller ones are intense, similar to the metric system. All right. So I'm going to extrude a small piece here. Then I'm going to scale it down. So I'm going to extrude out by uh, minus 0.2 blender units along the Z. E, Z, minus 0.2, and there we go. Scale that inward by 80%. So 0.8, so a decimal, a percentage. S.8 enter, there we go, 80% in. And I'm going to extrude out some more. EZ minus 0.5 enter, so I have a blender unit there. EZ minus 0.5 enter, there we go. So here I got my uh, my shoulder here, my deltoid, bicep, tricep, and this is going to be an elbow right here. Let me zoom out. Now I'm going to pan, I'm going to hold on the shift key and the middle mouse button, the third mouse button, the spinner, and you just go up. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to start making the forearm here. So small extrusion, easy, minus 0.2 enter. Easy, minus 0.2 enter. There we go. And I'm going to flare that out. So it's going to be S, 1.2 enter. S, 1.2 enter. There we go. Get a little wider. I'm going to extrude further down. Easy, minus 1.5 enter. Easy, minus 1.5 enter. There we go. That's my forearm there. Uh, let's go ahead in there by 70%. S, 0.7 enter. S, 0.7 enter. There we go. Start making a wrist in a bit. And then easy, minus 0.1 enter. 
easy minus 0 0.1 enter there we go now i'm going to taper that in go in by say by 70 percent s 0.7 enter s 0.7 enter there we go bam all right all right so i'm making a fist here i'm going to uh, shoot out by a bit shoot out by uh, 0.3 blender units in the minus direction along the z ez minus 0.3 enter there we go now make that wider two times wider s to enter there we go all right and then some more extrusion easy 0.3 enter and then another extrusion like that easy 0.3 enter two times easy minus 0.3 enter easy minus 0.3 enter there we go and then this i'm gonna taper it in let's go inward and that's let's highlight that Control B, boom, save that bad boy, update it. And we're gonna go inward by 40%. S, 0.4 enter. S, 0.4 enter, there we go. And we're gonna fill that in. There's a hole in there. So in the wireframe, you can't really see it, but let me show you guys here. See, there's a hole down there. That's because we deleted that one vertex error, left the big hole down there. We're gonna fill that in. So to fill that in, as long as it's still selected, hit F for Frank or F for Phil. There you go, filled it in. Cool, three for right view. There we go. So we got our arm right here. Bicep, sorry, uh, deltoid, bicep, tricep, forearm, and the hand down there. Here's the elbow. There's the wrist. It looks like a microphone or a trophy. Three for right view. All right. And now we'll start creating uh, the wrinkles for our arm here. So if you look at your elbow, you notice there are some creases there on the inside and outside of your elbow. Uh, also, if you look at a bendy straw, it also has creases. Uh, there we go. So where it bends has creases. So we're going to recreate those creases there on our mesh. So we're going to have it bend. We're going to add an armature in there. We're going to bring in a skeleton that will bend uh, with respect to the vertices and edges. So I want to add some in here. So I'm going to hover my mouse uh, along one of these edges here. We also could have done a bunch of little extrusions in there. That's really time consuming. So it's a faster way of doing this. So control R and help your mouse over here uh, on this vertical edge. If you're on a horizontal edge, you're going to get a vertical yellow line. You want to be out here somewhere on the vertical one on this segment here between these two vertices from up here i don't want it there i want it down here in the elbow part then i'm gonna hit the plus sign on my number pad six times one two three four five six and there you go it gave me additional edges right there and i'm gonna hit enter two times there we go and i just got those edges there like a bendy straw like an accordion that's it's gonna bend right there uh what we're using right now is called the loop cut tool so okay control r and you get a yellow line. I just hit Control Z to undo what I just did. So it activates it. And then you can move your mouse around to tell it where you want it. And then once you decide where you want it, you left click one time. You can, sorry, let me undo that, Control R. So once you uh, tell it where you want it, you can spin the wheel on your mouse to add more edges or hit the plus sign or minus sign on your number pad to get more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I got a bunch over there, but I want them right here and the elbow area so i just told how many i wanted and now i'm gonna hit enter or left click one time and now i come into the number of cuts but i can still move it around but i don't want to do that i want to keep them in the middle so what you're supposed to do is immediately hit enter again and keep some in there if not you can right click and put some back in place and come into that right there where they were at if uh you messed up it's somewhere off to the side just control z undo and try it again. Control R plus sign six times on the number pad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Enter, enter. There we go. Cool. All right. So my arm is good to go. There's my arm. It's model. It's got a bunch of creases here for the uh, where it's going to bend at the elbow. So I'm going to take it over to object mode. There we go in object mode. Now I'm going to bring in an armature. I'm going to bring in a bone. Uh, just like we have a skeleton. I'm going to bring in a bone for my arm right here. It's going to appear right here. This is my 3D Corsair. That's what that uh, lifesaver icon, that red and yellow thing is. Sorry, red and white. Uh, so bring in an armature. Same way you bring everything else into Blender. Shift A. And you'll get the Add menu. Go down to Armature. There we go. Armature. Boom. I brought a bone. It's in there. Uh, I can't really see it. It's inside of my uh, armature. So I'm going to activate a little feature in Blender so I can see it. I'm going to go over here in the uh, Properties panel. That's the Properties panel right here. And click on the stick figure right there, that running stick figure, or maybe it's dancing. If you can't see that, if it's not accessible, that's because you don't have your uh, your armature selected. If you select your uh, arm, if you select your arm right here, your mesh, see it's gone. It's give me um, 
the mesh object data. So you want to select the bone here and click it there, or you can select it in the outliner here. And you go with yellow, then you're good to go. And then you get the object data here, which is the uh, little running stick figure icon. All right, I want to see this through there. So I'm going to go over here and open viewport display. And then I'm going to click in front. It doesn't put it in the front, but it makes it visible. In the old versions of Blender, it used to be called um, X-Ray. All right, see, so there it is. So I can see it in there. See so for right view. So I have three on the number pad for right view. I'm going to rotate, I'm going to rotate this around because this bottom right here, that's the head, and that's the tail of the um, of the bones. It's dominant, that's supporting it, and it's got to be dominant over here on the shoulder and supporting it as it goes down in the arm. So while three on the number pad for right view, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so it points the other way. R, 180, enter. There we go. I made an S for scale, and I'm going to scale it down so that this, uh, this tail right here goes inside the middle part of the elbow. S for scale, pull the mouse away, and left click there. I want it somewhat middle-ish right there. Uh, so you can also think as the uh, head and tail here as joints, because they don't rotate with respect to these parts right here. So it's like a joint. All right, three for right view. Uh, my armature here, my bone is still selected. I'm going to take it to edit mode so I can create additional bones here for the rest of the arm. So your object mode, edit mode, or tab key. There we go. That's in the middle there. I'm going to go straight down here to the wrist, and then another one out for the fist. So by default, when you first take an armature, a bone into uh, edit mode, the toe is selected. So E to extrude. One time, don't hold on the E key. Pulling it down. I'm at the Z key, Z for zebra, so I can snap it at the Z axis, which is up and down. And bring it down to the rest area. I left click there. Boom. Let me zoom out a bit. E to extrude again, go out, Z key, into the fist there. You can go outside the fist a bit, but you don't want to make uh, this uh, bone bigger than the other ones. You want to keep it smaller than the other ones still. Left click there. There we go. So I got my bone in there. Three for right view. Now I'm going to go back to object mode, tab key for object mode. Now I'll create a parenting bond, and I want the, um, the armature to be dominant, while the mesh, the arm, will be subordinate. Uh, so to do that, you want to select the subordinate object first. So I'm going to select the mesh here. So I'm going to click right here on the shoulder, somewhere in the outside area first. There we go. So now the shoulder has a yellow glow. Now I'm going to multi-select the, the bone here. I'm going to hold on the shift key and click on the centermost area here on the bone somewhere. There we go. So now the bone has a yellow glow. And then the, uh, the arm here, the mesh, has this red-orange glow. So this yellow glow tells me that's, a, that's the uh, active object. If I create a parent-child bond right now, a parenting bond, this will be the dominant object, the one I selected the last, and that's the one with the yellow glow, the active, the active object. All right, so make sure that has the yellow glow, not the other one. If, if, you, if it's not like that, if it's the other way around, it's something like this, it's like that, we don't want that. Let's see. You don't want this to have the red-orange glow uh, or to have the arm that have the yellow glow. You want it the other way around, so click the... The mesh first, hold on the shift key, and click, while well, holding on the shift key, click in the middle of the bone somewhere. There we go. That's the color sequence that you want. I'm going to parent this, and that's control P, P for parent, P for Pablo. There we go. I'm going to go down with automatic weights. I'm not going to get into uh, weight painting in this tutorial, but um, that basically um, lets Blender know what um, how much area of influence every bone will have. So let's test it out. Let's test it out. Let's make sure the... Um, the bone is dominant to the uh, to the mesh here. So we'll go here to object mode and select pose mode. If you don't see pose mode in there, that's because your bone is not selected. So you just got to click on your bone and then you'll be able to see it. Select pose mode there. So from object mode, select your bone and then you go to pose mode there. All right, so I'm going to click on this bone here. I'm going to R to rotate to test it out. Boom, there we go. Gains. All right, let me click on this one here. R for rotate. There we go. And click this one here, R for rotate. There we go. And the bone itself has its own parenting uh, sequence as well. So this is the most dominant bone here. The first one we brought in, R for rotate. The whole arm moves. Or if I select this one here, R for rotate, move the mouse. See only the stuff uh, below it moves. Let me right click. So whenever I do the rotate, I just right click and it turns off the tool, puts it back in place. If you hit R for rotate, move the mouse and left click, it's going to reposition it. So you can hit Control Z to undo. Okay, so now to pose this bad boy here. So here's the timeline panel. I'm gonna make this wider, so I'm gonna hover my mouse over the edge of it. 
So you get a double sided arrow, hold on the left mouse button and then drag up. There we go, cool. All right, here's the timeline panel. So each of these numbers here is a frame, so there's one, and then 10 frames, uh, 20th frame, 30 frame. So there's 250 frames. Let's cut this down to 200 frames. So here we have start and end, and how many frames uh, we have here. So I'm gonna change the end here to 200. It's gonna make this shorter. It's gonna go down over here to 200, enter. There you go, less frames. So make sure you're on frame one. This one right here tells you what frame you're on. That's what this thing right here tells you, the timeline cursor. If I click over here, I get a different number, and it changes here as well. Let me go over to frame one. I can click in here, one enter, or I can just try to select it from here. Frame one, cool, frame one. So I'm at the beginning. Uh, the default speed in the uh, in Blender here, and in most animating software, is 24 frames per second. So in uh, 200 frames, divide by 24, it's, about a, it's gonna be about an eight second video. All right, so I'm at frame one. I'm in pose mode, I'm gonna hit A right here, and every bone should be blue. I hit A to select all, and it selects every bone there. Now I'm gonna insert a key frame, a frame, uh, sorry, a keyframe is a key moment, a key event, a pose when it comes to uh, keyframing. So I'm going to hit the I key for insert keyframe. And I'm going to select lot, rot, scale. So to insert a keyframe for the location, rotation, and scale of the bones. So my animation is going to start with this pose right here. So I just told Blender that at frame one, I want this pose there being recorded. Uh, so I can continue posing, hit I every time. But instead, I'm going to turn on the record button. Or in this case, it's called the um, in Blender. It's called uh, insert automatic uh, keyframe insertion. Sorry, auto key. It's called auto key. This button right here. I'm gonna click it. It was blue, so now it's on. Now I'm gonna go over to frame 50, five zero, you know, five zero, five zero. Cool. I'm gonna click on this bone here, and now I'm gonna start uh, to uh, start flexing here. R. I'm gonna go out like right there. There we go. Let me look at the handout, see how, how, how far I go out. Actually, oh, I'm going to move the whole arm. So I'm going to click on this one here. Uh, notice when I move this one, I added a yellow diamond here. That's a keyframe there. I'm going to click on this one here. R for rotate. Rotate it out of it. There we go. R, rotate on the hand here. R for rotate. And there we go. Something like that. Every individual bone has its own uh, keyframe in the timeline. So there you go. I want to get a post something like that where I'm starting to uh, perform the flex. I'm going to go over to frame 100. I'm going to turn that button on so it records all the keyframes for me. 100, there we go. And now I'm going to try to make this one all the way flat. I'm going to click on that one. R for rotate. And it's got right there, about right there. Cool. I'm going to hold on shift in the middle mouse button and drag this down. Cool. There we go. Now I'm going to click on the forearm bone here. No keyframe for it there yet because I haven't animated yet. R for rotate. And complete the flex. There we go. Hand one here. And rotate it out a bit. There we go. Let me rotate this one here more. Cool. There we go. So I'm going to go over to um, the first frame. If you hit this button right here, I want the little stop sign. It takes you to the first frame. Here we go. I'm going to hit play. Let me zoom out. Hit the play button. Watch it start flexing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Get them games, brah. And then nothing happens after that because there isn't uh, any more animating. There we go. Bam. All right, pause that. I'm gonna go over to frame 50. So if you notice every uh, 50 frames, I'm creating a new pose, so 50 there. And at 50, what I want, I wanted to, I wanted to maintain this pose. Because if not, it's gonna go up and it's gonna go straight down after it undoes the pose. So I wanna keep that pose there for a bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to frame 150 here. Now I'm gonna put my mouse over here, hit A. There you go, selects all of those there. So um, each of these uh, bones here is like on a different layer on the timeline. Now I'm gonna drag select frame 100 right here. So I'm gonna have the mouse on here, I'm gonna have my mouse inside the 3D, uh, sorry. I have a mouse down here inside the timeline panel. And I'm holding on the left mouse button and drag up and across frame 100 there, the keyframe at 100. There we go. So I just copy the keyframe for each individual pose there for that bone. Control C. Have the timeline cursor here at 150. If I hit Control V, it's gonna paste it right there. Control V. There we go. So it holds it there. So it kind of just, in a way, kind of almost like drags it over. Now I'm going to go over to frame 200. I can click this button here. It takes me to the last frame. I can tap in 100 here, or I can just kind of drag it over or just click here on 200. And for this one over here, I want the first frame there. So it returns back to the original pose. So make sure everything's still selected here. If not, you can hit the A key. 
everything should be blue. Drag select this one here, the first frame there. Have your mouse down here inside that timeline panel, control C, and then control V. And I'm doing this as my mouse is down here. Because if my mouse is inside the 3D view window and hit control C, control V, I'm gonna just gonna copy and paste my armature here. Copy, post to buffer. I don't know where to go. Not sure what happened there. But anyways, you make sure you're, you're aware of where the mouse is at. You hit the play button there. There we go, going up for a flex. Bam, hold it. And then back down. There we go. <clears throat> All right. If I go over to the camera view, zero for camera view, I'm at this weird angle right here. I can't really see the, the flex. All right, you can see part of it, but you don't see like the bottom of the arm there. I can try to repose the camera, zoom out or something like that. Uh, but instead, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit three for right view again and zoom out a good amount. Eh, that looks good right there. Try to center this somewhere. Remember you hit the decimal key, zoom and center. Oh, too much zoom. Let's spin the wheel. And then whatever view your user view is, right now this is my user view on the right view here. I can move the camera so it sees this, what I'm seeing here. So like I said earlier, I hit zero for camera view, I get that. Three for right view, I get this. So I'm gonna make this a camera view. So whatever your view is, so you can make that a camera view. It's gonna be control alternate and then zero on the number pad. Boom, that's my camera view right there. I'm probably gonna readjust the camera in a bit because when the arm goes down, it's not, um, it's not, it's not in there. There we go. All right, let me turn off the record button. All right, camera's not moving. Cool. Make sure we uh, turn off the record button because if you start moving stuff around, it's going to record those movements. So um, I should have done that before I moved the camera because it could have recorded a movement there or the camera shifting over. All right, so it goes down right there. And then it goes up about up there somewhere. Let me pause it. I'm going to select the camera and I'll pull it down so I can get the bottom of the hand here. Let me go to frame one where it's all the way down. Let me zoom out. Uh, to select the camera here from the camera view and click on the frame right there or try to click on the frame actually i can't do this in pose mode i'm done with pose one i'm done the posing i gotta go back over to object mode so i'm gonna click up here and select the object mode there we go if you're thinking you go to edit mode sorry to pull to object mode out of pose mode by hitting the tab key all you're doing is going back to edit mode so you want to go over to object mode there we go so I'll click it up there there you go now i select the camera there select the camera frame you can also go up here to the outliner this upper right uh, panel here, select the camera from there. I got the camera selected here. I'm moving the mouse inside this window. Now I'm gonna pull it down, G for grab, then Z so I can move it down on the Z axis and move it down so I can get the bottom of the arm there, the bottom of the hand right there. All right, I'm at the play button. So notice a uh, keyframe here are gone. They're still there, it's just that there's no keyframe for the camera. I haven't, I'm not posing the camera, I'm not animating the camera. Hit the play button, see if I get the top of the fist. And I don't get the top of the fist. So I may have to move the camera back some more. I'm gonna pause that. Make sure the record button is off. I'm gonna hit G and then X. So I can pull along the X axis there. Let me move it over here so it's at the top somewhere. All right there. G, X. And pull the camera back. About right there. Cool. Play button. Heels up. Bam. If you still don't like this view, uh, you can try this up here. These are the workspaces. I'm going to go over here to animation. I go, here's the camera view. Here's what the camera sees at the play button right here. So now here, this is something similar to the to the timeline panel, but it's called the dope sheet. I'm going to go over here, zoom out, select the camera there. Send for top view. I'm just going to hit uh, G for gram, put it over here. You can see the camera there. See, it's facing that way. It's got to rotate over to the, to the arm right there. There it is. G for grab, move it up closer, and move it down some, GZ, oops. So you can go with something like that if you prefer this other view here. So you can also pose the camera here in the uh, animation workspace. I'm gonna undo all that stuff. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, there we go. So I'm okay with this view here. There we go, bam. All right, there we go. So the pose is done. Now you just have to render your animation. And that's gonna be over here, uh, the output tab. Right here's the one that looks like a printer icon in the properties panel. Uh, very important, you gotta change the file format here from PNG to AVI JPEG. 
If you leave it as a PNG, it's going to give you 200 pictures. That's uh, handy for certain things, but if you just want a quick video, AVI JPEG, uh, AVI RAW, it's a higher quality, but you want to go with AVI JPEG. And if you look here, these are image files, right? There's this movie, so it's for the movies, for the animations. And I want to render this out somewhere, so I'm going to click on the folder here. And put on the desktop for now, and just give it a name there. Uh, Bicep Flex Animation Accept. Cool. All right. And then let's see. We're, let me go over to render view because uh, actually I should have done that first. Let me go over to render view so I see what it looks like. Get a preview of that because it might be in the shadows. Render view. Cool. Looks good. There's some shadows there. It looks good. If it's somewhere dark, then I have to uh, select my light here and then move it around. But that's good. That's good to go there. I'm okay with that. It's flexing. Uh, I know you can see this uh, armature here, the skeleton. But it's not going to be visible once you render it out. It's not going to be visible once you get the animation file. So you don't got to worry about that. So even if you turn off the in front thing, turn it off, turn it on, it won't be visible in the final product. All right, so now to render my animation, you can either play in or pause it. I'm going to go here to render. And I'm going to click on render animation. You can see there, there's a hockey. So you can also hit uh, control F12 and just wait patiently and let it render out. Depending on your, uh, on your graphics card and the speed of your computer, this might be done in a few seconds, might take a few minutes. Just wait it out and you're good to go. And then once it's done, you can uh, see where you saved it at and go from there. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Stay fit, stay healthy. Let's get them gains, eat lots of protein, lift them weights, drink lots of water, get them BCAs. I can go on and on about that stuff, but have an awesome, have an awesome day. Thank you for watching.